Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. And welcome to another episode on how to build a custom Gutenberg block for WordPress. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to implement a custom call to action in our Gutenberg block. This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for an affordable and reliable cloud provider for your website, Skysilk is the answer for you. The intuitive dashboard interface allows you to quickly deploy one of the many built-in templates in just a few clicks or directly upload your custom ISO. It doesn't matter if you're a senior developer with hundreds of websites or a student looking to experiment with your first cloud server, Skysail can accommodate all your needs with powerful machines starting at just $5 per month. Skysilk also comes with many other perks, like a convenient reward system where you can redeem Sky Points to pay for your VPS, a never growing Discord community, and lightning fast customer support. Click the link in the description below and use the promo code Alicad Skysilk to get 25% off of your personal cloud VPS. So WordPress comes with a bunch of pre-built and kind of like well done uh, custom Gutenberg blocks. The one that I want to focus today is the buttons because of course this is a custom call to action section which will come with a title, a description and now we need to implement a button. But as I said, WordPress already has a button block which is, is pretty good because it allows the user to customize pretty much everything. So we can write call to action here, allows the user to customize the color of the text. The background also introduces the gradients background which is pretty awesome. Uh, you can customize the border radius and then you can uh, of course implement a URL which has the built-in search of the URL. So if I write something, it searches in my WordPress installation for posts and pages with all the permalinks and uh, URLs that are already there. I don't have to open anything and we also have the built-in option to open in a new tab. So this is a pretty good Gutenberg block and I would like for my custom block to reuse a built-in block because that's super handy. So that means if WordPress releases a new version, Gutenberg gets updated and the button introduces new features, new functionalities, we will automatically inherit those. Of course, assuming that the new version won't break all the APIs and our custom block would crash in flame, but let's not worry about that for now. What I wanna do for now, I wanna implement these button blocks, the built-in button block of Gutenberg from WordPress inside my custom block. Let's do it. First of all, let's delete this. Date, awesome. So of course, Gutenberg offers a super handy dandy class in order to import a pre-built, a pre-existing block inside a custom block. And this is called the inner blocks. I'm using the word block a lot, but that's the way of Gutenberg. So we can import the inner blocks class, uh, inner blocks, and uh, let's be sure to write it properly, capital I and blocks from the WP editor. Now that I imported that, I need to define a constant variable to state which blocks the user is allowed to add in that custom section. And we can create a constant variable, which is gonna be all uppercase because this is a constant that needs to stand out from everything else. And this is sort of a convention where we have like an array of different strings or integers is usually written all uppercase. So we can define this as an array of strings. And the first strings needs to simply point to the location of the button. And of course, Gutenberg or WordPress, the, the, the WordPress developers, they wrote these blocks in a pretty straightforward way. So we can access the button by tapping the core and then button. And this is the only block that I want to allow in my inner block. So we can copy these inner blocks class that we just imported. Inside our edit method here, we can simply write the HTML markup in the location where we want the user to be able to import or to be able to add that custom block. So we can open the inner blocks HTML markup and use the allowed blocks with a capital B attribute to specify inside curly brackets my custom class, the allowed blocks. So we are saying to these uh, HTML markup inner blocks that the only allowed blocks are those that I defined in my constant variable, in our case, just the button. Perfect. And the last thing that I have to do, I have to simply implement this inner blocks markup in the safe method. Otherwise it won't be saved and won't be visible in the front end. And here 
we need to do it in a slightly different way, but not too much because yes, we can use simply the inner blocks markup attribute, but then we need to define what type of inner blocks, like what do we want to print in our safe method in the front. And we don't want to print the entire block, the entire markup with everything. We just want to retrieve uh, the content. And by retrieving the content, we're just going to have the basically the sanitized and compiled version of the block that we just implemented, in our case, the button. That's pretty much it. Let's see if that actually worked. Let's access our WordPress installation. Let's refresh. And the button is not here. Oops, it's here. Oh my God, look at that. What did I do? Okay, sorry. <laughs> This is a huge mistake. So uh, I think I put it in the wrong location. Yes, I put it in the panel body. That's a mistake. That should not be in the panel body. Uh, uh, uh. That's pretty impressive that the button was printed in uh, the actual uh, panel side, but here it should be right after the rich text editable because that's where it should be. It should actually be in the HTML market of the button, not in the side panel. Sorry about that. So let's save, refresh. Let's see if I crash this, if I caused any weird issue. All right, it's right here. You can see the button is there, uh, remove the block. So. What we have, we're going to have this situation. We're going to have the custom call to action with a title and description, and then a custom add button section that we can add just a button. Of course, the because of the nature of Gutenberg that it's a repeated component type of implementation, the user can add as many buttons as we want. I don't think this is a problem we can kind of like ignore this because if the user really wants to have multiple call to action, yes, so be it, it's fine. But here we can customize these with call to action and change these to a beautiful gradient. And yeah, the text, let's leave it white. Uh, border radius, let's make it appeal and add these to be uh, post like welcome to Gutenberg and open in a new window. Perfect. If we update this, we refresh this page. This is all good. If we actually go and take a look at the post, look what we have here. We have the title, the description, and the call to action that has our rollover effect, which is not great, but you can customize that, of course, because you cannot animate gradients. That's a thing that you should remember. And then if we click, we actually go to the page, opens in a new tab, and we go to the page that we specified. That was very straightforward, right? Well, that's pretty much for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.